Good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, Allison Zuccaro. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon um, as we discuss a little bit about decorating ideas to serve the food service industry. We've been doing a, a lot of webinars um, based on um, trying to just get education out there to all of our customers as much as possible. So um, we've been doing them very frequently, weekly, in all different sorts of venues, Facebook Live events, and so on. So for those of you that have attended many of them, thank you so much. And hopefully, uh, if anyone's new, you can take something out of this. This topic um, arose when we were trying to de decide a way or some of the best um, options, venues, industries to target um, during this pandemic that we're going through. And it's become very apparent that one of the um, areas that's um, not really suffering, but that's really growing is the food service industry. Um, they do have some challenges presented during this time, just like the rest of us do, but they still seem to have a steady um, course um, and they have some decorating challenges that they need to overcome. So hopefully we can talk through and give you some ideas of how um, that's gonna play out and how you can maybe capitalize on some of that um, and get some of that uh, revenue stream into your business now and you know some of these ideas will hold true tried and true later on as well so let's talk a little bit so we're gonna we've broken this down into restaurants um service grocery or you know food service and then delivery services just to kind of target it in a little bit a lot of the challenges and opportunities that will arise are overlapping so they're going to be very similar some of them are specialized to each one and that's why we separated them out but we're going to talk um, about them individually so one of the things that restaurants are challenged with right now um, are the changing need for staff apparel to accommodate delivery and food runners. So you have, you know, the restaurants that are now pretty much gone, you know, at least in most Midwest states where we're at right now are still on um, very limited um, seating, if at all. And for a very long time, you know, we're only doing pickup orders or call in orders. So, and th they had become very efficient at figuring out the best way to create social distancing um, scenarios while allowing customers to still place orders and pick them up. And a lot of times that meant um, delivery into the parking lot or, you know, a lot of our local restaurants here were delivering, you know, right to our door. So that's some changing staff apparel that they need. And then Many restaurants were looking to supplement income to make up for a loss from their dine-in service because although they were still able to, you know, offer carry-out services, that still took a, they still took a hit on revenue for not being able to have in-dining, especially some of your, um, you know, wait staff um, that is no longer, you know, employed or working because they don't they don't have a need for them. So we've got two different challenges here, the the expanse or need for garments, and then the supplemental income that we need to create. So there's a couple different opportunities that we've come out of that. So staff apparel is a big one. Um, and there's all different kinds of ways that you can go about this. So if we look at the pictures here, we have um, a button up, which is, you know, a standard tried and true with a left chest decoration. We have an apron, um, again, pretty much similar to any wait staff apparel with a full color um, decoration on it. And then you have um, t-shirts, which is going to be great for promotional swag. So if they're trying to supplement the income there, um, they can sell t-shirts of the, you know, their favorite watering hole on it. Um, and some little extras, and then some non-apparel products. So stickers, window decals, banners, and signs. And, and those really fit into that, um, like for an example here, this jar of salsa that they branded. So your favorite watering hole might start selling their salsa jarred up in order to supplement um, some income or a sauce or you know a soup or whatever um, in a reheatable package. And then window decals, banners, and signs, 
are going to be great to advertise that they are open, to advertise potentially um, new hours that they have, um, repositionable signs, um, you know, to let them know the process, you know, how should I pick up my food? Where should I go to pick up my food? And those sort of things. So those are some of the opportunities that present themselves from some of the challenges that, that we've seen them experience. So how to solve some of those decorating solutions. So restaurant decorating solutions for staff apparel, one of the biggest products um, that we're recommending in this category is our stretch litho mat transfers from Transfer Express. And there's a variety of reasons why um, stretch litho mat works really well. First of all, it goes on a gamut of products. So it'll go on cottons, it'll go on polys, it'll go on cotton poly blends. Um, it has a, a matte finish, so it's not shiny. It's very matted out. It's full color print, so it doesn't matter if you're getting one color or 16.8 million colors. It's not a per color price. It's a full color print, so the price is the same no matter how many colors that you're getting. The other nice thing about the stretch litho mat is um, they have we have some new pricing that is um, available by image or you always have the capacity with any of the Transfer Express products to gang sheet. So in an instance like this, where you have a full front going on a t-shirt, you have some small designs going on uh, masks, you have a left chest on a, um, a button up, and then you have a little bit longer design to go on to an apron, the stretch litho mat, all of those transfers could fit on one sheet. And then you could order up as many sheets as you need. So the ability to gang sheet helps to drive the price down and put everything in one location for you. You can even mix, you know, different logos. So if you have different um, restaurants or different businesses that need full color and you want to take up as much space on the sheet as you can, you can also do that. Um, and that's one of the advantages to stretch, stretch yeah, litho. Stretch litho. Um, the stretch litho also has the availability to have freestanding text with sharp edges. Um, it has a very clean, clean uh, thin, clear outline around it. That's an adhesive outline that's there, but it's really thin and um, very hard to see. So you don't have to have any big contrast color outlines like you do with some other digital um, designs. And then, like I said, um, you can gang them up. The other biggest bang for your buck with the stretch litho mat is the low temp. So the temperature is under 300 degrees, which is gonna allow you the opportunity to heat apply on some of your heat sensitive fabrics, like your tri-blends, your 100% polyesters, things that tend to get um, scorch marks um, when heated at a very high temperature. So uh, again, stretch litho is a great all-encompassing solution for this type of um, space because of its versatility, really. One of the other decorating solutions that we have is the um, promo swag. And we talked a little bit about that at the beginning with t-shirts from your local watering hole or potentially some um, um, sticker goods that you could use on sauces and things that you're selling. But another really nice idea is, um, and there's a whole list here, but unisex t-shirts, sweatshirts, tote bags. Tote bags are huge. Um, and, and they're really, they're really showing a lot, a lot of times with the groceries, especially with the reusable tote bags. Um, but we're seeing restaurants get into them too, again, for promotional swag. So um, you, they may purchase a reusable bag to take their order out in. Um, hats, mugs and tumblers, koozies, bandanas, um, food product packaging. These are all different promotional things that you can do. You can decorate these with all different kinds of finishes. So the stretch litho mat will work as well as, um, you know, if you want to get into some of the special effects products like the glitter flake or the metallic or the flock that has that velvety look, that's just another way to kind of take it up to the next level. But it's a really good way to kind of offer a, a variety of promotional swag. So talking about the promo swag, one of the decorating solutions that we've identified, and I listed a bunch of them um, before, is the new CAD Cut Ultra Weed heat transfer vinyl. So 
Um, the nice thing about the CAD Cut Ultra Read Heat Transfer Vinyl is it's a great material for everyday heat printing projects. Um, it, it's matte finish. It has a very soft butter-like feel. It's available in a wide variety of colors. It's very easy to cut and weed. Um, it goes on on a low temperature, again, 260 to 300. So again, when we're talking about um, heat sensitive fabrics like tribrands and polyesters, you don't have to worry about that. Um, it It is made in the USA, which is also a very nice feature and a lot of clients are looking for products that are made in the USA. It's the newest heat transfer vinyl um, from stalls. It's only been out for a little less than a month now. So. Um, it's definitely um, brand new, very easy to use, and again, great on all of these pro projects, especially when you're getting, when you're talking about the cottons and the cotton poly blends. Um, it's, it's, it's economical. It's a really great option. We offer the Ultra Weed um, in a variety of different ways. You know, you can obviously order um, the material and cut it yourself, or we have all of our products are available in services. So if you wanted us to cut something for you in a transfer, we could certainly do that as well. And there's some really good examples uh, for you to look at. And then decorating solutions for non-apparel. So um, static clings. Static clings are available in a clear and a white media. They will apply to virtually any window or polished surface. It does not have an adhesive on it. It's just pressure sensitive. So they're very easily repositionable to take on and off. Um, you think about, you know, the window clings, you know, standard window clings. That's literally what it is. Um, so they are reusable. The static clings are really nice because, like I said, you can advertise um, new business hours. You can advertise, you know, must wear a face mask to enter. You can advertise uh, something like text, yada, yada, number to uh, let us know you're here and we'll bring your order out to you. You know, whatever it is that the customer wants, they're economical, they're reusable, so they can take them down and put them up as things change um, or as the process changes throughout. And they can keep them for later. So they're really great options. They are available in full color. If you put them on the white media, they're opaque, so you can't see through the other side. If you use the clear media, there is some uh, transparency there. Also, we have the custom stickers and decals, which are really, really great for um, anything smooth surface that you want more of a permanent fixture on. So like I said, these uh, bottles of sauce that we're bottling up for our customers to buy, a nice, clear, um, clean, smooth surface. It's got a nice adhesive on it, full color. And again, anything that we're talking full color here is not a per color price. It's the same price whether it has two colors or 18 colors on it. Um, but you can use it um, here, um, water resistant, so it'll withstand tough weather if it's used for any outside um, conditions. You can even use these types of things for stickers to label um, bags as you're bagging up food and things like that. And then your standard sign vinyl. Your standard sign vinyl is going to be available in spot color. So it's not full color printed. It's just your standard spot color. This is your typical sign vinyl that's a mid-grade that's good for an indoor, light outdoor use. But again, it's going to be great to cut and advertise ours. Um, we have some customers that have used it, especially like in grocery stores, to label the floor for arrows of which way, one-way traffic and aisles and things like that. So again, just another all-compassing option to kind of target this and kind of be uh, have all the options that your customer needs. So here's some of the grocery store challenges that we've talked about. And you'll see some of them are going to be um, similar and uh, some of the products we're going to talk about are going to overlap. But we have safety needs for evening hours and parking lots. So we have a lot of grocery stores now that are doing pickup. If you try to get a pickup in a grocery store anymore, it's virtually impossible to get anything, you know, in two to three business days. You have to push it out to two weeks. So they're definitely having a lot more pickup and that means a lot more foot traffic in the parking lot. So you want the um, you want your delivery staff to be safe. Grocery store staffing is growing because they're not slowing down and 
they are much busier. And so some of the local grocery stores in our area have literally had a hard time keeping staffing. So with staffing growth, be, now you need apparel growth. So they're need, they and a lot of times they need apparel decorators that can keep up with on the spot decoration because they're literally onboarding employees that quickly that they need to be able to, um, you know, get a couple in a very short period of time. And then there's always health concerns. Um, obviously, with this pandemic that we're dealing with, the more people that you have in an enclosed space, the more um, safety challenges or health concerns that present. So that ties into a lot of the arrows, the one ways that we're talking about signage, you know, to indicate to your customers um, how they should be handling um, some of these d safety distancings. Um, you have screens at their registers now, like all these different things that are the new normal. So let's talk about what kind of opportunities that presents um, for you. So staff apparel, button ups. Okay, that's going to be very typical for a, a grocer or grocery store employee, a button up typically with a left chest or a sleeve placement on it. Um, T-shirts, polos, aprons, same, very similar to your restaurant. Hats, um, safety apparel for your curbside pickup. So we have this great vest here that has a grocery brand on it. It labels staff. Notice um, the striping on here is reflective as well as the decoration is reflective. And that lends itself to the safety of the um, employee that's wearing it. Promotional swags to give customers a little something extra. Again, that ties into some of those reusable grocery bags. Um, we have, uh, you know, polypropylene um, is a very common um, product or substrate that's used for grocery bags that are economical and reusable. We also have, you know, your nice heavier duty cotton ones. So that works really well too. Um, and then the something extra. So stickers to put on carry out bags or boxes, window decals, banners and signs. So those are all different options that we have in the um, grocery opportunity. I have a question, a couple questions. Sorry, I'm just catching up. Um, so one question we have was, are the decals good for car window stickers? And and that was uh, from the slides that we talked about previously. Yes, the the when we call them window stickers slash car decals, they can be used on windows. They can be used on um, cars as well. So they are um, indicative or very similar to a. Uh, bumper sticker material. They have like a silver adhesive lining on them, so they make them, you know, opaque. Um, but that that is a great option. Um, and then another question, what do you use for things um, for mugs and water bottles? So when you're talking about water bottles um, and if you're talking about mugs or tumblers, like the metal kind, I would, you could definitely use the window stickers slash decals or the sign vinyl. Um, the one thing that you're going to have to be cognizant of is the dishwasher safe. So we would recommend um, hand washing anything that has any of that on it, mostly because the inks on the full color print are not necessarily abrasion resistant. So, you know, anything that may come in contact with it could potentially scratch um, off of the, the ink on there. I mean, they are uh, durable to a point. So I wouldn't, uh, you know, recommend anything rough washing on that. Um, and then for mugs, typically when you're talking about ceramic mugs, I would not typically use a decal on that. I would typically get a direct print or um, a sublimation print because it's going to be a lot more permanent when you're talking about ceramic mugs. You can for um, temporary, uh, you know, affixing, but typically um, ceramic mugs are going to be, you know, holding hot liquid coffee. They're going to be um, washed more frequently. Um, at a high high volume and probably put in the dishwasher. So I think you'd want something more permanent um, than what the, a sticker would afford you. Um, so there's a question on how many washes does it take for the stretch litho to peel off of a mug? I would not use the stretch litho on the mug. Stretch litho is recommended for fabric applications only. So it's a heat sensitive fab, um, 
material that has fabric uh, adhesive on it. So it's going to go on cotton, polyester, and any blend of the two, not for a hard good. When you're talking about a hard good, then we're talking about the pressure sensitive materials. Turnaround time for the stretch lithomat is another question. So Transfer Express ships within three to four business days. Um, if you need a proof of the artwork prior to placing the production order, that's going to take a little bit longer. Um, but it's typically three to four business days turn times. All right. Sorry about that. I Sorry, I missed those questions. Um, so let's get back to some of the op other opportunities. Um, like I said, we have the extras, the stickers, the window decals, and the banners and signs. So we'll talk about each one of these a little bit different. So grocery store decorating solutions, um, staff apparel. So you have an all-encompassing sort of, um, again, situation here because if you look at the examples that we have here, we have a design on the front of a cap. We have another design on the side of a cap. We have a polo that has a left chest image on it as well as a sleeve logo. Um, we have like a keychain dongle on the side that has a small logo on it. And then you have a protective face covering that also has a design on it. With this product line, um, with this, we really recommend the AquaTrue. You can use um, the Stretch Litho Mat as well. The AquaTrue is um, another good solution for a variety of different reasons. Number one, it's water-based screen printed transfer. So it has a very, very light feel. It has a really nice stretch and rebound. The AquaTrue is also going to be applicable onto nylon. So the, the stretch litho is not. The AquaTrue will adhere to most uncoated nylons. So it affords you a little bit more options as far as what it will apply to. And this is important because when you order the AquaTrue, again, you can gang sheet up a bunch of different images on the same sheet. But the nice thing is when I was talking about grocery store staff growing and grocer grocers needing to keep up with the staff demands on a very quick turn, AquaTrue is a great option because you can, and you can do this with the Stretch Litho too, but you can purchase the AquaTrue transfers in a gang sheet with all these different images on one and hold it on the shelf. So when your client comes to you and says, I need five, you're literally pulling five shirts out of a box and five transfers off the shelf, heat pressing, printing them and delivering to them in a relatively quick amount of time. Um, and so that's the advantage to, and we, we a lot of times we call those program orders where you're doing on-demand printing for a client, but in a program setting. So they're ordering over the course of year time with you. Um, it, like I said, it has a really great stretch and rebound. It has a low temperature application again, so you're not going to have to worry about your polyesters or your scorching, um, your heat sensitive fabric. So that's another advantage to it. The um, sheet size for the stretch litho or for the AquaTrue is a 12 by 19. So it's a little bit bigger. You can get a lot more on there. Um, and it's, uh, again, great for heat sensitive fabrics, including like our spandex and nylon. So when you get into that performance wear, it's going to go great on a hat. It is a per color charge for transfers. And so it works really well, um, for grocery store logos. Usually they're two, three colors top. So it definitely works. And there is a dye blocking layer that we can add if it's going on, uh, polyesters, dark polyesters that could uh, potentially, um, bleed. So, and here's a great example. So tips and tricks for staff apparel when we talk about the AquaTrue 12 by 19. So here's the gang sheet. Um, it's sheet pricing. AquaTrue is sheet pricing. So we charge by the sheet and by the color. So you're going to pay for the sheet and you can put as many images as you can fit on it without incurring any additional fees. So in this design, you can see on the left most left hand side we have some of those bigger bees which probably were the cap transfers then in the center um, we have the big b with the text below it which is probably like a full front for maybe a t-shirt um, and then we have some of the smaller ones all around it which could be left chest transfers could be sleeve transfers 
could be cap transfers, could be a variety of different things. So by ganging up with the stretch litho and taking advantage of the sheet, we can get a variety of different transfers that serve a variety of different purposes. Another thing that's important to note is use like sizes when you can, obviously. So typically a left chest and a cap size transfer are pretty much very similar to each other. So that's another way that you can get some longevity out of it is try to use like sizes in different applications so you can elongate what you're getting. So when we talk about the decorating solutions for worker safety, we talked about some reflectivity. And so we have this um, reflective safety vest, which would uh, come to us on a, um, uh, the vest itself already has the three reflective stripes on it. So the, the vest in and of itself is already certified for safety visibility by having those reflective stripes. We've added a reflective two heat transfer vinyl to it, the Branson Market and the staff below. The reflective two um, material is not rated for safety. There is some reflectivity to it by itself standalone would not be ANSI certified, but in conjunction with a vest that already has um, reflective striping on it, we're good to go. And it does definitely create some visibility for you. Um, so it's a great addition to high vis apparel. It's a lower cost option. So there is a 3M reflective that we sell that is ANSI certified standalone. Um, however, it's going to be a little bit more expensive. So when you're adding it to reflective apparel, it's not always necessary to, to go for the 3M look. Um, it's going to add some of it visibility and some safety um, with customers' logos. And then again, it's going to have a low temperature application. Another thing to note about when you're a heat applying onto reflective vests like this is you really want to try really hard to isolate those seams so that you don't heat print them when you're pressing the reflective. Um, and the best way to do that is to use some interchangeable platens um, when they're available. So on that mid back, you could use like the six by 10 or the 11 by 15 probably works really well. And the seams will fall to the outside. And then that staff on the below works really good with like the sleeve or the leg platen, um, even if you just turn it sideways, because it'll isolate that top seam and allow the rest of the staff to fit on there perfectly fine. So those are just some tricks for when you're heat printing things with seams. So let's see. One question that we have was with regards to masks, do we provide different mask colors, styles in our garment catalog? Transfer Express currently has a, um, I believe it's a 50-50 blend mask that they're offering and they do have, I do know they only have one style um, and they do have, they do have different colors. Um, Stalls currently has an economic mask available um, that's, I think, 100% cotton, and that's available in three different colors, um, and that's minimal. I think it's like a 10-piece pack that's available. So we don't have a lot of variety and a lot of selection, but we do have we do have a couple different options available for you um, if you go to, like I said, Transfer Express or Stalls. Okay, so food delivery challenges. Again, there are going to be some overlap here, but safety for evening deliveries. So you have a lot of, um, you know, delivery services out there that are delivering all the time now. And, um, you know, and they're, and again, they're, they're going into in and out of restaurants in low light conditions at night and to um, clients doors at night in low light conditions. So, um, we need them to be safe and we need the customers to be safe too. I don't know about you, but I don't necessarily know that I'd answer the door from, you know, just some guy carrying a food service bag. Uh, if I didn't, if he wasn't branded, like I think it's safe for them, the, the staff and safe for the customer if the food delivery service is branded. Um, and then additional branding for food delivery bags. So that's some of the things that we're going to talk about. And the additional branding for food delivery bags is a little different than some of the other um, two uh, sectors that we've talked about. 
So opportunities, again, staff apparel, same thing, button-ups, T-shirts, polos, aprons, hats, um, safety apparel for curbside pickup. So that's pretty much the, the same thing that we've hit on the other two options. Promotional swag to give to customers a little something extra. Again, we're going to talk about the stickers, um, the window decals, the banners and the signs you know, all of those different kinds of things. The window clings are great um, and the stickers are great for cars, especially for delivery service cars. They can utilize those. And then non-apparel products. And you can see from the, you know, slide that we have here, we have like a windbreaker, we have a food service delivery bag, and then we have your face covering. Same sort of idea. So food delivery decorating solutions, worker safety. So um, tri-blend t-shirts. So tri-blend t-shirts are, you know, are notorious for scorching. Tri-blend scorch, 100% polyester scorch. So a really great option for that is the CAD Cut Premium Plus. And the CAD Cut Premium Plus is another CAD Cut material um, right up there with Ultra Weed. It's going to be thin, silky, matte finish. It has a really good stretch and rebound, so it will be great for a tri blend or any performance wear. Um, it's available in a high tack or a low tack, as far as the tackiness of the carrier, and this plays in how you how it weeds and cuts. Some people like it a little bit more tacky. Some people like it a little less tacky, depending on how much detail that they're actually cutting. Um, again, a low temperature application is another key to it. Premium Plus is available in many, many, many colors, and it's a very, very matte finish. So it's it's very matte. Um, almost chalky, if you will, in its madness. So there's no shine to it whatsoever as far as the Premium Plus goes. And it's a really great option um, for single or uh, double color, um, especially if you're getting into um, lower runs when you're not doing, you know, really a crazy high volume. On um, a water-resistant jacket, so you have your delivery personnel delivering things either to, you know, the parking lot or to the customer. They're going to be in the elements, um, you know, rain, sleet or snow, shine, sunshine or wind. They're going to, you know, be in the elements. So it's going to be very common for them to have a water resistant or a wind breaker type jacket in order to try to protect them as much as possible. A lot of times those are made from nylon. Um, or their polyesters, a lot of times that they're they have a coating on them. So, um, in this option, we've we've used the high vis color reflective, um, and the high vis color reflective is a reflective product um, that has color to it. So it's it it has a little bit of reflectivity to it in low light conditions. But in non-low light conditions, it has a color layer. So it will have a red or a blue. Our um, CAD cut reflective and our 3M reflective are silver. Um, they do they do have more visibility in low light conditions, but during the daytime in regular light, it's just silver or grayish color. And you know, some people get bored with that. They want something a little bit more. So the high vis is definitely more in the fashion trend. Um, so it's uh, still thin. It has a matte finish. Um, it's soft and lightweight. Um, and it has a variety of different options, but it's available um, and it has a low temperature application. So it's really a great option. You could use Premium Plus here. You could use Stretch Litho. You could use AquaTrue. Like there's so many of the other products that work. We're just trying to give you a variety of different options. Depending on the volume that you need and how many colors you would need would depend on, you know, exactly which product would work best for you. So it looks like we have a couple more questions. So um, one question, how small can you print CAD cut reflective to heat transfer vinyl and have good detail? You know, it's really going to depend on how um, much you're willing to weed. Uh, uh, the detail cuts, I'm using, um, depending on the kind of cutter that you have that you're using. If you have a good quality cutter with a nice, um, you know, sharp 60 degree blade, you can get some pretty detailed cuts. It's really going to depend on how much weeding you want to do. You know, if you're cutting the registered trademark R, for instance, in super fine detail, and now you have to get a microscope out to um, weed out that center of that R, 
that's going to cause a lot more labor time for you. So, you know, usually when you get into small detail text, um, you know, when we talk about like three eighths of an inch or, you know, smaller, you're going to want to do some test cuts there because some three eighths text that's bold won't have any problems with it. But some three eighths text that's really fine and thin, you, it might cause some labor issues when weeding. So it's really just going to depend. Um, we in our stalls production facility use lime thickness as a, as a base um, and we're we're running really high volume. So we have, you know, we, we probably are a little more aggressive on line thickness um, than if you were cutting in house because we have to be because of the volume that we're doing. So with the reflectives, we usually recommend like a 0 0.07 is about how thick we want the lines to be in order to not weed up off the carrier and weed pretty smooth. Um, So the question is, does the 3M reflective peel off? Um, and then there's a follow-up question. Does it peel off nylon or should we use the high-vis color reflect on the nylon jackets? The 3M reflective and the high-vis reflective are both rated for nylon. So they're both, they will both adhere to nylon. Um, the adhesive layer is exactly the same. The only difference between the two is the high-vis reflective has color to it. So the high-vis reflective will be available in blue and orange. The 3M reflective is only available in silver, um, but they both go on nylon. So they work exactly the same. They heat apply exactly the same. The only difference is the color versus non-color. Let's see. Can you purchase sublimation prints from you for use on mug presses and masks? Yes. Stalls does sell sublimation transfers in our um, CAD prints line. So if you go to um, the artwork dashboard and you upload artwork and you choose um, CAD prints, one of the transfer options that will be available to you there is sublimation. So you can get sublimation transfers that will adhere to anything that you would normally sublimate. So 100% polyester or any 100% polyester coated goods. All great questions. Thank you very much uh, for um, putting those in the chat. All right. So we've talked about worker safety. So when we're talking about water resistant apparel, we're gonna discuss a few tips and tricks. So a couple things to understand. A lot of water resistant, wind resistant apparel has coatings. Um, and so uh, I always recommend that you test whatever you do, whatever application you're gonna do, that you test on a garment or a swatch of that coated fabric before you run a production run for a client. And there's a variety of different reasons. We have found even in the same brand, the same exact model, style, line, and color, from order to order, there can be some discrepancies in or some changes in the coating makeup that is used. And you will find that you know, one time, you know, you always use a specific Charles River jacket, the same model, the same color every single time. And the next time you order, you use the same product, the same application, and you experience failure. Something changed. Um, and so we always recommend that you test first and foremost, just to make sure there are some coatings out there that are just non you just can't break them down. Secondly, there is a tip that you can use to remove the coatings um, or break down the coatings a little bit in order to allow the adhesive layer of any heat transfer vinyl uh, a little bit better grip. And that is to use rubbing alcohol or denatured alcohol um, to remove some of the coatings in the area that you're going to heat print. We don't recommend you treat the whole entire thing because, again, the coating is there for a reason. It's either to protect you from water or from wind or another element. Um, so you don't want to remove it from the whole entire thing. The easiest way that we found to do it is put it in a fine mist spray bottle, spray the area, wipe it with a cloth. It usually, the, the moisture dissipates relatively quickly, um, and then you can heat print on it. Always, always, always preheat to remove any unnecessary moisture and any chemicals and sizing. And this is really important with coated fabrics. It's important with every fabric, but it's really, really important with coated fabrics. So, um, and again, any of these things that you do may affect the color of the garment. So be sure to test in a small area first. 
And so due to the nature and water resistance um, and waterproof coatings, only certain materials are recommended for decorating. So all of these materials have um, aggressive adhesives. So they have adhesives that have been manufactured specifically to break through some of those um, those coatings. So Sublistop, the Supertech Sublistop, which is a CAD Prince product, the Supertech Opaque, which again is a full color CAD Prince product, CAD Cut Thermograp. It's the same, same as Thermofilm, but it has a different adhesive, a more aggressive adhesive that works better with nylons and coatings. And then your CAD Cut 3M Reflective. Um, your high vis reflective is right there with the CAD cut reflective. And then on the transfer express side um, for nylons and coatings, we would recommend the Aqua True um, would be your best bet. Again, still test just to be safe, but these are the ones that we really recommend that we've had the best success most of the time with any coated fabrics. All right, looks like we have a few more questions. Um, there is a question, what's the best paper to be used to sublimate on dark colored fabrics? So sublimation is a process of dyeing. You're literally taking an ink, you're heating it, a, 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 a special ink, heating it up to a very high temperature and it turns into a gas and then it goes into the fiber of the garment and literally dyes the fibers. So it needs to be done on a whole fiber, not a hollow fiber. That's why you can't do it on cotton because there's no place for the ink to go into. And because you're dyeing the fabric, it needs to be done on a light or a white color. You would not want to sublimate on a, on a dark garment um, because you're literally trying to put dye on, let's say, black. The outcome is going to not be vibrant whatsoever. Now, if that's the look that you're going for, that distressed washout sort of look, you can create some very amazing um, um, designs that way. And I've seen some really nice, even like on 50-50, where you get some distressing. But just know that um, it's 100% polyester light is always going to be best. Those are going to be the best results um, just because of the nature of sublimation. Um, with the stretch litho mat transfer peel off 100% polyester or 100% nylon jacket. Stretch litho mat is recommended for cotton and polyester and cotton and poly blends. All of our products are wash tested to 50 washes. So if you heat apply the stretch litho mat on 100% polyester using the correct time, temperature and pressure, it will last, it will outlast the garment. It will not peel off. Stretch litho is not recommended for nylon. So you would never, we would never recommend stretch litho for use on nylon. Um, it may apply perfectly fine. Um, I don't know that you'll get the longevity out of it. So it may, it may uh, wear during laundering, but we, we would steer away from stretch litho mat for nylon. But 100% polyester, as long as you do it correctly, shouldn't have any problems at all. Okay, so food delivery decorating solutions, and we're talking about food bags. So when we're talking about food delivery service, you're going to see the delivery drivers are either going to have hot bags or cold bags, whether they need to keep the food hot or the food cold. And so these are some different options. Most of these are going to be coated and they're going to be nylon. Um, because they are coated to wick away the moisture um, and nylon is synthetic, tends to do that a little bit better. So that's, it's going to be kind of the same conversation that we just had about the water and the wind resistant jackets. You're going to be looking at your Super Tech Opaque, which is a printable heat transfer material that's available in full color. It's lightweight, stretchable, has a nice soft hand. Um, and it's going to work great on those. Um, it will also apply to nylon, which is good. And, and that was why it was on the list. And it has a low temperature application because if you're getting into polyesters, you're going to have to worry about scorching. You're also a lot of times going to have to worry about scorching when you're dealing with buttons, seams, zippers, handles. Um, a lot of those will tend to melt heated at high heat. Um, you're going to want to isolate the print area as much as you can, again, using um, special platens or print perfect pads, whatever you can to isolate the area to try to eliminate any potential melting or scorching of handles or, or, or zippers specifically. Um, Scotch, the, the 3M Reflective, same thing. Um, it's a full color 
um, it's not a full color, sorry. It's gonna be your uh, reflective heat transfer vinyl um, that'll go on, you know, um, any fabric, including nylon again, and that's gonna be your visible. So you've got your full color in your super tech opaque. Your reflective is gonna be your uh, high vis or your, visi your visibility safety rated. And then your CAD cut Gorilla Grip 2 is gonna be your spot color. Um, so this is a great option. CAD Cook Gorilla Grip 2 was engineered specifically for application on to nylon. It's a spot color. Um, it, it adheres to nylon, satins, oxfords. It's soft, lightweight, um, and it does go on on a lower temperature setting also. So that's going to be a really great option for these bags as well as some of the jackets and things that we talked about before. So tips and tricks for decorating face masks or face coverings with heat presses. Um, there's a variety of different things to talk about. Um, there's different um, techniques that you can use and there's different transfers that you can use. So if you can find, if you can get, um, and there are some out there, 100% white or light colored polyester face masks that don't have... Um, a lot of seams that will lay flat, you can do an all over sublimation print like you see here. And um, so this is a great example. This was an all, it was a full white mask that has an all over sublimation print pattern on it. And then the, the uh, restaurant name in varying different locations. You can sublimate masks that have seams in them as well. Um, you may just have to isolate the area. Sublimation is going to be the softest um, to, to decorate face masks because you're literally dyeing the fabric. So it's not going to lend a hand to it. It's just going to be nice and soft and take on the, the feel of the fabric. And sublimation transfers, um, especially on white, are very, very, very vibrant. You can get some really amazing color. Um, screen printed transfers. This is going to be your um, um, stretch litho mat, your aqua true, your goof proof will also work from Transfer Express. Those are going to be those um, spot color or full color screen printed transfers that are available. Um, is, you know, when you're going on, typically the masks are cotton poly, cotton poly blender, 100% poly. All of those are going to work just fine. The goof proof you'd want to stray away from if you're doing 100% polyester darks because it goes on at a high temp. So um, you don't want to scorch it, but it's definitely an option. Whenever you're using anything screen printed or CAD cut transfer vinyls, we would recommend that you steer away from heat pressing it directly over the breathing space. So in these examples here, you can see everything is offset. It's either to the, to the left, to the right, or to the low. Um, you don't want to, whenever you get anything that's not sublimation, it's going to have a little bit more of a hand, and we don't want to restrict the breathing space at all. So you want to try to make sure that there's enough breathable area there that you don't have that. So that's why you'll see a lot of these offset to the bottom or to the top. Um, and then CAD cut heat transfer vinyl is great for single color applications um, or easy personalization. So if you need to personalize some face coverings um, for, you know, individuals, I'll give you a great example. My niece is getting married next week and she's going through with the wedding. They're having a very um, small intimate ceremony with very little few people, but the venue that we are going to has for food in Northern Michigan has required that we wear face masks. And um, so my niece was very upset. So we have, we have personalized some face masks. We have bride, we have groom, we have mother of the bride. Um, I'm sure it will be a great photo opportunity for everybody. Um, we got a laugh out of it, but the really great, it was a really great opportunity to utilize CAD cut because we we're, there's only 10. So we only needed 10 different things. So we're literally doing one-offs, nothing in high volume. Um, and so that's a great option for that. Some sort of, and it's a keepsake for the people that are attending. No one will ever forget the wedding of 2020 um, with the face mask. So it's definitely a keepsake. So that's a great example where CAD cut heat transfer vinyl comes in. The other nice thing about using CAD cut heat transfer vinyl in this, in this specific example is the 
availability of different effects. So you have glitter flake, you have metallic colors, you have the fashion film electric, the fashion film and the premium plus have huge color availability. So you can really get creative with what you do um, in those as well. And one other thing to mention when it comes to sublimation is you have the option to do um, sublimation patterns now. So in our pattern wizard, you can order sublimation pattern sheets that you can then, you know, create full patterns that you can sublimate, which is really um, a nice addition because um, some of those patterns are so nice and vibrant. Um, let's see. looks like we have a couple more questions. So the question that we have is, if a layer of sublicon is placed between the sublimation artwork and the garment, would this procedure be the best way of printing on dark garments? I don't have an answer for that. I have to honestly tell you. Um, I don't, um, I have never utilized the sublicotton to sublimate onto a dark colored fabric. Um, we just pretty much stick to sublimation is recommended for light colors only. So maybe there is someone on the call um, that's listening that has experience that might be able to type an answer to that question that I'd be happy to share with everyone. Um, this is where networking comes in, which is awesome. Um, I do not, I, I don't want to steer you in the wrong direction. So I, I don't, I don't know um, that much about sublicotton. Uh, but thank you for asking. And maybe, maybe we'll all learn something. Okay, back to tips and tricks on heat printing face coverings. One of the best tips is, you know, do eight at a time. You can fit eight, eight face masks on a 16 by 20 platen. Um, easily, especially if you're doing offset. And so you can literally do eight in one press. You know, if you're doing, um, you know, premium plus ultra weed, you're talking about, you know, an under 10 second heat application. So place, heat apply, peel, and you have eight masks done at a time. So it'll definitely speed up on your production time um, and make it a lot faster for you to get through them. So don't, you can also use a cap press we have some customers that are using the cap presses if you have one um, and you want to do one-offs, that's perfectly fine too. Um, sometimes that helps to isolate that print area in the middle if it makes it easier for you. Um, you won't be able to do eight at a time, but that may not be um, a necessity. So it's just going to depend on, you know, what's more important. So we covered a lot of different things, um, a lot of different avenues as far as heat printing for the food service industry and some of the different challenges and opportunities that are presented. The last time I presented um, this same topic to a different audience, one of the questions that I had was um, getting the business. And we didn't really cover that in this presentation. So I just want to share with you the, the few ideas that I had. Um, so one of the questions that we had was, how do you, how do you get the clients? Like, how do you get into the food service industry clientele? The biggest thing, and, and this holds true for anything, is do, you know, if you have a lead in. So do you know somebody that works there, that manages there, that has a contact that works there or manages there? That's always going to be the easiest way in because, you know, some just as busy as, you know, everyone is right now, you know, people are screening calls and everything like that. So the, the best way is going to be an in. So a, a like a common acquaintance would be your best way to get in. Once you get in, there are some amazing things that I think it's important to do. First of all, if you get in and you get a job, it is really great to feed off of the social media aspect of it and and the um, the stories. Our customers and clients love stories. So if you can get a, a satisfied customer that you can deliver product to and you helped them solve one of their challenges, either by being able to heat print on demand for them and deliver to them quickly or adding revenue to their store by, you know, offering some of these other um, you know, product offerings that they can help add to their revenue stream. If you can get some testimonials from them and share those stories to other potential clients, that speaks volumes. Stories are really amazing um, for customers and it really helps. And then the social media aspect of it is, you know, everyone's doing this. We're all doing webinars. We're all doing um, podcasts and all these different avenues of electronic 
communicating Zoom meetings and things like that these days because we have to um, because of the state that we're in. So we all have to do this. So utilize that social media to talk about some of the things with the, the client that you've utilized um, and kind of just tell people what you've done or, or you know, supplier of or that sort of thing. Um, anything that you can do to kind of build up that presence. And especially if you're in a smaller community or you're in a tight community, people really tend to feed off of that. So if you have those sorts of avenues and you can, you know, talk about how you're um, helping out, you know, people definitely will support local business and support local people that are definitely trying to add things in. Um, so there's one last question, um, probably about my closing statement, but when you print on demand, do you charge for all the artwork up front? Yes. Yeah, so when you're printing on demand, you're essentially um, creating a program. So typically print on demand um, customers will set program parameters around it. So it, it just depends on how you want to do it. Um, there's a couple different ways that you that you can you can do that. But any any artwork should be paid for upfront. So, um, you know, if you do anything with stalls or Transfer Express, you know, as long as you provide vector artwork with stalls, um, you won't pay an art fee. Um, so there's no art fee associated with it. But if you have to incur any art setup charges um, on your end, as far as, you know, maybe hiring out an artist or your labor time to set up the artwork, you should definitely account for that upfront. I would almost liken it to like setting up a program fee if you want to do it that way. Like here's the fee to set up the program. After that, um, you know, you're going to have to buy so many transfers up front in order to have them stocked on the shelf. So you should incorporate some sort of minimum or charge for that, like the first run. And then, after then then after that um i would charge per hit so every shirt that you do is going to be xyz um and you can do it a variety of different ways lots of people do um you know contractual things where they say a minimum store of 500 pieces they buy 500 pieces up front they bill the customer for 500 pieces up front and the artwork fees and they only charge for the heat transfer when they deliver so they, the customer paid for the heat transfers up front, but you're charging a hit charge when you when you deliver it to the customer. So if you're charging four dollars for every time you heat press something, let's say, when when you deliver to that, then they pay the they pay that four dollars. Um, and that way, there you're not out the cost of the transfer, or the cost of the artwork. Um, you can do it, you know, another way where you just do the minimum and the art charge and um, they pay for that all up front and then you just deliver them as they need them. You can do that as well. There's a few different ways that people do it, but typically you're going to, you're going to try to get as much out of upfront as far as like your administrative fee. So artwork, um, minimum orders, anything like that. And then, you know, keeping some on hand and then, you know, if you get some decent clients that do program orders with you that are, you know, seem to be reoccurring, then you can set reorder points. When you, we get down to 25, we're going to reorder, you know, another 100 to keep them on, on in stock for them or, you know, however, to get to that price point that they want to be at. Um, but that's a very good question. But, yes, you should get as much as you can up front. So, okay. I am... Uh, there's no more questions. We've covered, you know, some of the most common questions, or at least some of the um, marketing questions that I had from the last time we delivered this. So I want to thank you all very much for your time this afternoon. I appreciate you coming. Um, thank you very much for all your attentiveness. And I hope that you have some ideas on how you can go out and possibly solve some of the challenges that some of these our food service delivery um, customers are feeling right now. So thank you very much and have a wonderful rest of your day.